Hey everybody, Matt here. Thanks for stopping by and welcome to Imagine Then Make. This is part two of the video series on making a portable bookshelf. In part one, I showed you how I constructed this cardboard prototype. And in this video, part two, I'm going to show you what I did to create the 3D model in SketchUp. So here's my model of the portable bookshelf done in SketchUp Make 2017. Today is July 3rd, 2020, and I just checked Trimble's website, and this version of SketchUp is still available, still freely available for download on their website. I'll leave a link in the video description if you want to check that out. If you've never learned how to draw in 3D, but you always wanted to, I highly recommend giving SketchUp a try. So just a quick note before we get going here, I'd like to suggest that the best way to use my SketchUp tutorial videos is to go ahead and open up the video in one window on your computer and then open up SketchUp in another window. That way you can watch the video tutorial. When you see something being demonstrated that you want to try, you can go ahead and pause the video, hop back over to SketchUp and actually try what it is that you just saw demonstrated. So to further show you what I mean, this is my video number 66. It's for uh, brand new SketchUp users starting from scratch. Now the videos in this series were all done with the uh, free online version of SketchUp, but all the same principles apply when you use SketchUp Make 2017. So if you go ahead and watch the video, you see something demonstrated here. I'm showing how to draw a 2x4, properly dimensioned. You listen and watch and understand what I've shown here. Pause the video and then hop back over to SketchUp and then actually try and do what you just saw me do in the video. This way you're learning how to use SketchUp by actually using the program. So in this video I want to show you some of the things that I had to do in order to construct this model and hopefully uh, these uh, tips, let's call them, or techniques will help you as you use SketchUp to design your models. So the first thing that I want to mention is that all of the parts, here's two flaps, here's a top piece, and here's a bottom piece. All four of these parts are their own separate group. So that allows me to stick the parts together and also separate them cleanly if I uh, need to. The other thing that it allows me to do is it allows me to hide different groups, which in building this model I did a lot of. So here I have the top piece highlighted. If I right click with my mouse and choose hide, okay, and then I'm going to, so now it's, well, it's kind of cross hatched. So now I'm going to left mouse click the bottom piece and highlight that group, right click with my mouse and choose hide. So now both the top and the bottom piece are hidden. You can see them as cross-hatched um, outlines or, or actually solids. If you don't want to see that, which oftentimes I didn't, I would go up to view and then I would click on hidden geometry. Right now it's checked. As soon as I click it, it will be unchecked. And now the hidden groups are indeed not visible at all. That only leaves these two groups as being visible. Now why did I do this? Okay, so what I wanted to be able to do with my model 
was to rotate the flaps up and down 90 degrees. So I'll show you how I did that. So I just selected the left flap here. You can tell because it's highlighted. I'm going to choose rotate and then I'm going to zoom in. Now I had previously drawn a circle that indicates where the pin will be that the flap rotates around. So now I'm going to click on the middle of this circle. If I zoom out and click my second point right here and then start rotating clockwise, I'll type in the number 90 for rotate 90 degrees and there's my flap rotated 90 degrees. So now if I do the same thing with the second flap, I'm going to select it, choose rotate, I'm going to zoom in so the inference engine built into SketchUp can hopefully find the center of the circle. And did you notice that? In order to find the center, I had to go out to one of the edges of the circle. Hopefully you understand that circles in SketchUp are actually built of segments. So it's not actually an arc at all, it's a series of segments. And you can control how many segments um, the circle is built out of. So one of the things that I've found in using SketchUp is that when I want to locate the center of the circle, oftentimes I have to zoom in, find an edge of one of the, or an endpoint of one of the segments that make up the circle. That will help the inference engine find the center of the circle. Now I can left mouse click to choose that point. I'm going to go down here and choose left mouse click again at the midpoint for this group and now I'm going to rotate counterclockwise type in 90 for the number of degrees and now that flap is rotated 90 degrees now what we want to do is show the section of the model, the two parts, the top and the bottom, that we previously hid. So if we go up to View, click on Hidden Geometry, now we see these two pieces, only they're still hidden. So if I left mouse click to select it, right mouse click and choose Unhide, now it's visible again. If I left mouse click the bottom part, right mouse click and choose unhide. Now that the bottom piece is now visible, if I click anywhere in the workspace, nothing is highlighted. If I click on the orbit tool, now I can orbit around my model. So this was very useful to prove to myself that I had the dimensions of the flaps correct and that when I pivoted around the circle that I showed you that I drew on the sides of each of the flaps that they would pivot around and fold the bookshelf flat which was part of what I wanted to do. Now <clears throat> as a result of making this model there were a couple of design changes I decided to make. Maybe you see the first one if you saw the first video, maybe it'll become, maybe it's a little bit obvious. But in the first video, I had the ends of these flaps going right here. So when the flaps were folded down, this whole surface was smooth. You didn't have the flaps sticking out at all. Well, I decided I wanted to change that because I preferred to have the bookshelf open and filled with books and have this each end to be a, a smooth side. So let me rotate 
the flaps open again and I'll try and show you what I mean. So first thing I'm going to do is select the top piece, right click, choose hide, left click the mouse, left click the bottom piece, right click, choose hide, view, hidden geometry. So now I'm going to select the first flap, choose rotate, I'm going to zoom in, just found one of the endpoints that make up the uh, circle. Now the inference engine can find the center of the circle that I drew. I'm going to click on my second point for rotating right here. Start moving counterclockwise, type in 90 for the number of degrees, and there's my flap moved 90 degrees. So now let's do the second one. And by the way, I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in and out. Let's select this flap, choose rotate. I'm going to find an endpoint on my circle. Move in, the inference engine finds the center. Rotate, oops. I'm going to move to this midpoint of the flap here. Start rotating clockwise, type in 90, and there's my flap fully open. Zoom back out. All right, so now view, hidden geometry. Let's get our arrow tool. Left mouse click the bottom, right mouse click, choose unhide. Left mouse click the top, right mouse click, choose unhide. Left mouse click anywhere in, anywhere in the workspace. And so there's my model. So this is what I wanted to show you. So with the flaps fully open, now this whole side of the bookshelf is smooth. And likewise on the other end. So I made that change because I thought it would look better. And also if I decide to make multiple bookshelves, I can line them up end to end, and it'll be a nice, um, smooth interface connection. So that's a big part of what I had to do, was form the four parts as groups, and then use the hide and unhide so that I could rotate the flaps around and make sure that everything lined up correctly. So something else that I did quite a bit of is I used the guides. So you can make the guides using the tape measure right here, and you can make the guides visible or invisible by clicking on the view menu and then selecting guides. So right now guides is unchecked. That means the guides are invisible. Now that I clicked it, now guides is checked and you can see these dashed lines those are indeed the guides now you can draw as many of these as you want you can think of them as kind of construction lines you can the inference engine will recognize the intersection of guide lines so you can use them when trying to line up your different parts of your model. So you can see here what I had to do, in, well hopefully you can understand, that what I had to do in, in order to build or cut this corner of the pocket for the flap and then also the flap itself is that I used several guide points here 
so that I could find the center of a circle, drew the circle, cut away the arcs, part, the portions of the circle I didn't need, and then extruded from there. So that's how I did that. And on the flap side, kind of did the same basic thing. Now you can see that there's a little bit of an error here because my arc is not tangent to the top part of the flap. At least this one isn't that side. And that side isn't either. See, there's a little piece that's sticking up right there. But for my purposes, it was close enough. All right, so I made um, a lot of use out of the guides. And it was oftentimes I was clicking on the view menu to turn the guides off, turn them back on, and also to show hidden geometry and make hidden geometry invisible. So I was up and back and forth out of this view menu quite often. So really, there's, that's the three main points I wanted to make. The way I approach SketchUp from a woodworker's point of view, I look at each one of the parts as another piece of wood that I'd have to cut on using some sort of a tool in the shop, whether it's a manual tool or a power tool. And then I take the collection of wooden parts and I assemble them into an assembly. Now, in, in this case, these flaps pivot. So I had to mark where the pivot points were and then hide and unhide various parts of the model so that I could reach that pivot point and swivel the parts around the flaps. So I used... I formed all the parts as groups. I hid and unhid each group as necessary. And I created a lot of guides that helped me line up the different parts when I was assembling them. So once I got my model finished and I was ready to make some drawings, some printouts, and dimension those so I could go back down to the shop and start cutting some wood. What I did was went ahead and hid each piece of the model one at a time. So if I left mouse click the left hand flap, right mouse click, choose hide, do the same thing for the other one, do the same thing for the top piece. Now the only thing that's visible is the bottom. If I rotate this around into a position that I think would look good on a printout, then I can choose on Windows 10 all the way down here now it's called snip and sketch so I'm going to click on new I'm going to drag the left I'm going to hold down the left mouse button and drag over an area there's my screenshot and then I'm going to go ahead and save it You can see I've done a few of them already into the folder where I've got my SketchUp model. So these are the screenshots that I already grabbed for the model. 
Here's one that shows it fully closed, of course. Here's the bottom. Here's the top. And here's one of the flaps, the side and a top view. So then I could print these out and use the tape measure tool. It's right here. And measure the different dimensions and write them on my printout with a pencil. So you can see this is 18 inches long. It's five and three quarters inches wide and so forth. So I did that for all of the four parts and that gave me a stack of drawings that are dimensioned and then I could go down to the shop and cut some wood and make one of these portable bookshelves out of wood. So here are the printouts that I made and then subsequently dimensioned Here's the top piece with its dimensions. Here's the bottom piece. Here's the side view of the flap. Here's a top view of the flap. And that's it. For my final tip, uh, for this video, I want to show you another feature which I did not use while I was constructing this model, but I have used in working with other models. So you go up to the view menu, you slide down to face style, and you choose X ray. And what that does is it allows you to basically see through the different parts. In my case, I've got four parts. And I hope that you can see that there's the circle for the pivot point for the left flap, and there's the pivot point for the right flap. So now let's go ahead and see if we can actually rotate the flaps without having to hide any of the geometry. So I'm going to switch back to my arrow tool and I'm going to select the left flap. You can tell it's selected because the lines, the outlines are now blue. I'm going to choose the rotate tool and I'm going to zoom in. Okay, so the tricky part about the rotate tool is that you have to get the protractor in the right orientation. So I'm going to kind of manipulate the drawing, the model, a little bit. Okay, so now let's choose the rotate tool. Okay, the protractor is on the face of this part, this flap. And you can see that it's looks like it's perpendicular to the red axis, which is right here. See how the protractor now is flat? So now it's perpendicular to the blue axis. Let's try and show that again. Okay, so there's the blue axis. And the protractor is perpendicular to that, meaning that when you rotate, you're going to rotate around the blue axis. Now the protractor is perpendicular to the green axis, which means when you rotate, it's going to rotate around the green axis. And for our needs, oops, what we want to do is we want to rotate around the red axis. I'm going to choose the rotate tool. Okay, and now you can see the protractor is red, meaning that when I rotate the flap, it's going to rotate around the red axis, which is what I want. So it's already 
found the center of the circle. So I'm going to left mouse click and then I'm going to move the mouse down to the midpoint of this segment here. Left mouse click again. I'm going to start moving clockwise and type in 90 for the number of degrees. Go back to my arrow tool and click anywhere on the open workspace. And you can see that we were able to fold those flaps without actually having to hide or unhide the geometry. Now this kind of view is kind of interesting because you can see that the smaller circle in the flap is concentric with the larger circle which is in the bottom part. You can also see the notch that's cut out in the bottom part so that when the flap rotates this part of the flap has some place to go and you can also see the pivot point. So using x-ray is very powerful. It lets you, I guess it lets you see like Superman, right? He had x-ray power, x-ray vision. To turn x-ray off, go back up to the view menu, slide down to face style, and uncheck by left mouse clicking x-ray. And there's our solid model again. All right, so that's really all I had for this video. I hope I've given you a few tips about how you can better utilize SketchUp Make 2017. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.